Psalms 23, I'm going to be there just for a little bit. Very familiar chapter, very blessed passage. I want to focus on something a little different than usual, other than, but, but actually, specifically the first few words. The Lord is our shepherd. Do you know what that means? You know what it takes for somebody to be a shepherd or somebody who is taking the responsibility to care? Taking the responsibility to care. 1 Timothy 2.7 says, I am ordained a preacher, Paul says, and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. 1 Peter 4 and 11 says this, If a man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I believe that. I trust that. I uphold it. I want to promote it, especially with what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. Every one of us are sheep. Somebody say, I'm a sheep. Say it again. I'm a sheep. In that standing, it's a requirement that we have a shepherd. It's a requirement. The scripture referenced to us as sheep. Sheep need care. They need training, teaching, discipline, care, time, sacrifice. We need that. And there's only one source that we're going to get it from, and that's from our Heavenly Father and our shepherd. I want to talk about the shepherd just for a few minutes. Say, I'm a sheep. Are you convinced of that? If you're going to be convinced of that, you're saying, I need help. I need care. I need counsel. I need forgiveness. I need protection. I need all these things as a shepherd would do for the sheep. And that's who we are. Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Your soul needs to be restored from time to time. It gets torn and tattered and weary. We need that restoration. You're not going to find success that's going to be worth anything if you think your soul is going to be satisfied out here in life. It may look like it for a moment, but you go right back to the place where you was before the, the, the bottle rocket experience. God Almighty, through Jesus Christ, can restore what's lacking. He can heal and bring deliverance and peace and joy and assurance through His shepherd. Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. That's a key verse in this whole passage. That's a key verse in this whole passage. We like the concept of him being a shepherd. We like the concept he's going to uh, be, be there for us and be, uh, uh, be our sustenance and so forth and so on. He leads us beside this. He protects that. All those kind of things are wonderful, but it's key concerning his righteousness for his namesake. You see, he, as the Creator, has done everything that he wants to for he and himself, and that's a glorious thing. We happen to be involved in it. We need to have the mindset to bring honor and glory to him because we're only the sheep, and I say that with respect. We are only the sheep. I say that with respect. We need the shepherd. We need his counsel. We need his protection. We need his sustenance. We need his provision. We need that. We're sheep. Hey, anybody knows that? We're the sheep. We need him, and he happens to be the shepherd. Jesus Christ is our shepherd, and he's a good one. And he's done anything and everything possible to establish our uh, eternal life. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's the process. When he leads us and guides us, we're trusting in him. We're not going to follow anybody very far if we don't trust him. But if we follow him, he's going to cause us to be in a position of we have no fear. Because we're trusting him. We're trusting the shepherd. We have confidence in him. We have assurance in him. we rely relying on him. We're following him in righteousness. That keeps us steady and assured and confident and successful because we're following the shepherd. Because we're following the shepherd. Uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This rod and staff represents counsel. It represents protecting. It represents discipline. It represents guidance. It represents consoling. All the concept as we as sheep 
need. He is that. His rod and his staff, his righteousness, frankly, his word of truth that makes us free, that keeps us in a place that we need to be. Every one of us are longing for that position. But we cover it up or we represent it as something else or we use or we draw a resource from something else to try to sustain through life. Sometimes it's up, so a lot of times it's down. But we need to focus on him because we're the sheep. What does the sheep sound like? Add a D. Bad. We, we need help. We need that sustainer. We need the one who provides. We need him. We can fly on our own for a little bit, but what happens? We go down. Sometimes we crash. Where's the shepherd? We left him back there when we took off. Amen. <clears throat> he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's the most blessed experience I've ever had. Right in the midst of the attack. Right in the midst of the false accusation. My, right in the midst of everything going haywire. He prepares a table. And I enjoy it. I'm comforted by it. I'm blessed by it because the shepherd has taken care of this sheep. And the same with you. If we'll trust that. And for believe, oh yes, there's all kinds of mayhem going on in every one of our lives. It's happening. The sheep are being battered. We're not out paying attention to what the shepherd is saying and following what the shepherd is saying to do. Amen. Did that look ugly? Anybody knows what that means? It's a little gruesome to this society, a little rough to this society, but reality is reality. Right. Almost finished with this passage, then we'll jump on a few other things real quick. Uh, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Blessing beyond blessing, more and more and more, more than you can stand. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How can somebody say something like that? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Who can say that? Who's qualified? Who has the authority? Who would have the audacity to say such a thing? A wise sheep following the shepherd, that's who. A wise sheep following the shepherd, that's who. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. John says, or Jesus said in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. That's not just an occasional when it fits my schedule. I might show like and be like and act like something's nice and carry on because I'm too busy for you, bud. The shepherd, the good one. Gives his life for the sheep. Guess what? Our shepherd, who happens to be a good one, has given his life for us. Not just the final few moments, death and so forth, but that was definitely a part of it, but everything and every aspect of his life was established for you and I. He gives his life for the sheep. And another verse that says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. He knows you. Everyone by name, how many hairs on your head, the scripture knows that or says that concerning how, how well he knows you and everything from top to bottom, inside and outside, he knows you better than you do. Amen, he does. That's what kind of shepherd he, he is for us. If you're going to purchase something, you have, should have enough wisdom to know nothing about it so that you're not disappointed. God Almighty, through Jesus Christ, has purchased us. He knows very well what he's doing, and he loves what he's purchased, and he's taking care of every one of us all the time. He's doing it right now. As the Spirit is ministering in this service this morning, he's doing it right now. Some of us are kind of paying attention. Some are kind of not. That's kind of normal with sheep. <clears throat> Last few years, we've heard the phrase, I've got your back. Anybody hear that before? All of a sudden you got quiet. We've heard it a lot. I don't use it a lot because to me it's a little uh, inappropriate. I'm going to say something more fervent and effectual. Like, I care for you. If you like to say something along that, that, along that line, fine. God's got our back. God's for us, not against us. That's what I'd like to say. God is for us, not against us. Anything and everything that's going on in our life, He is for us. Psalms 119, 116 says this. The prayer or the request was, Uphold me, uphold me, according to thy word. Anybody want to make that kind of commitment? Anybody want to say and agree and after that say, Whatever you say, whatever you want. Amen. Husbands, was that in your mind when you said, I do? Uh. 
The request, 119, 116, uphold me according to thy word. I want to be upheld by God Almighty and everything about him and all his agents and angels and everybody that's with him according to his word. I don't want to be led, misled, or promoted, or built, or any kind of way, any other way. I don't want to be. The request is uphold me according to thy word that I may live, not only in this natural life, and let me not be ashamed of my home. The hope, this is the crux of the message today. That we desire that God upholds us, that we want Him to be our shepherd, that we're going to yield to His counsel and wisdom, that we're going to follow in His footsteps of righteousness, that we might live and not be ashamed of what He's doing. Amen. He's our shepherd. He's the one that gave His life for us. He's the one that's doing everything He possibly can, frankly, not then, but also now. Ongoing, He cares for us. He's caring for us right now. In the midst of everything. So good to see you, Sister Faye. Right now, He's caring for us. We're at the brunt of life and society and everything else is going on within it, but He's caring for us. He's, hanging. he's not going to give up. He's for us, not against us. The Scripture says He's for us, not against us. Amen. Uh, he'll do it. He's our shepherd. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not a sp- a dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's how he's going to do it. He's not going to do it the way we want him to do it. He's going to do it because of his righteousness for his namesake. And he's upholding us right now. As we live and move and have our being and trusting him and calling upon him and expecting of him, he's doing that. He's upholding us. We easily would say, well, why this and why that and this and that and the other and I feel and I think. And so it's easy to do that and those things are real to us in this life. But what he's doing according to his righteousness in our spirit, he's upholding us. He's given us truth. He's forgiving us. Anybody need forgiveness? Amen. Ask him to forgive you then. If you believe in that, ask him to do that. And on and on and on is his blessings. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He will keep us. Psalms 26, 3. Brother Scott, you know what? Oh, Lord, he didn't off. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. He will keep us in perfect peace. Settled, assured, at ease, with confidence and joy and victory and all those kind of wonderful. He will keep us in perfect peace. Here's a requirement. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. The thing that's going to work is because we're convinced we need a shepherd, and he's the shepherd, and we're going to trust him. It's going to work very well. It's going to be blessed, honorable, joyous, and prosperous in every kind of way that you can think of. Amen. Thou will keep, protect, embrace, hold on to. Him in perfect peace. Perfect is matured, flawless. Whatever God does is flawless. Matured, capable, functioning, uh, sufficient, and everything about that. Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. Philippians 4, 7. I'm past halfway through. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Philippians 4, 7 says this. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall... Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Look how the shepherd is treating us. Look how he's providing and stabilizing and all those wonderful kinds of things that is of assurance. How is that working? It's because we realize we're the sheep and we acknowledge he's the shepherd and he has all that we need and we follow and trust him. That's how it's working. When we question, when we doubt, and we back up because of fear, and we'll talk about that just a little bit. When that enters our life, when we follow that kind of thing and we produce that kind of thing, it's bumpy. It's bumpy, and you reach for remedies that's bumpy. may satisfy for the moment, but it's bumpy because you'll run out or be disappointed or won't be available because of the bumpiness of it all. And you get out there and you feel abandoned. No hope, that's what you may feel because you're not trusting the master. You're not trusting the shepherd. You see, the shepherd's willing to leave those who are okay and run off somewhere and get somebody that's way out there in no man's land and bring them back. He's willing to do that. Amen. I'm glad he's my shepherd. I'm glad to be a sheep. I'm going to stay a sheep till things change. I want to, what do you mean? I want to stay a sheep, meaning I want to be willing and obedient, submissive to him because he's purchased me. He's watching care for me and he's, I, he's against, not, he's for me, not against me. He's got my back. 
and everything else. All righty then. We need not fear anything. We need not fear anything. We know this verse, God has not given us a spirit of fear. If we have it, if we experience it, if we hold a uh, whole do si with, hold hands with it, it's because we went and got it. It's because we listen to some influence that's providing something that's not good and it's unhealthy for us. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what we have. Say, I have it. What do you have? You have power, love, and a sound mind. <clears throat> he knows, and we know, at least right here, fear don't do anybody any good. You know what else the Scripture says? The Scripture says there's no fear in love. If there's a, a, a help, a good, healthy uh, sample, helping is what I'm trying to say, of love in our life, fear has little to do with you. Fear has little uh, accomplishment and success with you because of love being prominent in your life. And we're just touching this and skimming the surface about love in Sunday school class now concerning families and so forth and so on. Love has everything to do with wanting to do for something else or someone else. Has everything to do to be willing to sacrifice, lay aside contentions, lay aside selfishness, lay aside whatever else. It is all about me, myself, and I so that you can provide and care for someone else. That's what love's all about. Oh, there's the uh, February 14th aspect in it. There's other little things along the line that's a part of it. But the main thing, God so loved the world to give. What did it take for God to do such a thing? Was it February the 14th? Way off. Way off. So loved the world that he gave his only son. And we know the concept, at least as much as we're capable to know, what it meant for that, what it took for that, and the reason for it. Jesus Christ is our good shepherd, and he's doing what he's fulfilling his role right now. He's fulfilling his role through his word, through his spirit, and we're being comforted, we're being blessed, we're being counseled, we're being understood, we're being forgiven, and it's ongoing. The requirement is that we accept that in the position that we're in, and the position that he's in, and we acknowledge that, and we follow that. The blessings and everything that's promised that will follow. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. If you're bothered, there's going to be a blunt statement. You already know what it's going to be, and, and the devil's trying to get you to grit your teeth. Perfect love casts out fear. If fear manipulates you and moves you and captures your attention. You consider and you, you're diabolical and so forth and so on. You think and say things and sometimes even do things. Love is minimal. Love is lacking, I should say. It is. And we all can say, but, 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 but he and she and... Uh, uh, I know that. Been there, done that. Every one of us have. But the scripture is still truth. Perf. Perfect love casts out fear. When there's a sample, uh, sufficient sample, not sample, what am I trying to say? Uh, a supply, a sufficient supply of God's love and grace in our life, fear will have no manipulation, will have no success. Nothing will happen when fear is way out there somewhere. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Anybody know that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It has torment. It keeps you from deciding right things. It manipulates you to say and do things you wish you hadn't of. It does that. And we're all familiar with that. So how do, you, how do you confront that? You develop God's love in your life. You develop God's love in your life. And love is more than giving somebody two popsicles instead of one. Way more than that. It has to do with letting them have the whole bag and you go home with nothing. Anybody know you'll be better off with less sugar? <clears throat> Almost finished. Fear has torment. He that feareth, there's another verse, is not made perfect in love. If you fear, if you doubt, if, if that's going on in your life, love is lacking. As simple as that. Love is lacking. All right, finishing with this. God promises to uphold and keep us. He's our shepherd. He's doing that. He's in that position. Let's uphold him and his commandments. Luke eleven twenty eight 28 says, keep the word of God. Another place it says, keep his sayings. Another place, keep his words. And several places it says, keep his commandments. 
Simply put, if you don't like those phraseologies, simply understand this. Do what he says. Do what he says. Simple as that. He is sufficient and very capable of being a good shepherd. He's proven it over several centuries now. And a lot of people are, are experiencing the joy and peace that he provides. Jude 21, just nearly finished. Keep yourselves. What does keep mean? It means embrace, protect, provide for, keep safe. Keep yourselves, sheep, sheep Dean, sheep Matt, sheep Tony, sheep Amanda, sheep Melissa. All these folks in here are sheep. It says keep yourselves. But, 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 but I thought Jesus, yeah, he is. Now what are you going to do about it? He said, don't do, don't do that. He said, are you going to do it? Or not do it. He says, do this. Are you going to do it or not do it? Keep yourselves following his word, his power and grace. Keep yourselves in the love of God. That's what this verse is saying. Looking for. Don't think that you need God's mercy. Don't think you can get by with hours and hours and hours and not asking his counsel and mercy. Don't think that you can get by with it. Oh, we might fool ourselves in such a thing, but we need him. We need what he's providing. <clears throat> Wish I had three more hours. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. He's our shepherd, people. Trust him. Just because he's our shepherd, just because we have the promise of eternal life, doesn't mean bad things won't happen. They're out there, and sometimes it seems like it's worse. Amen. Sometimes it seems like it's worse. But we have this promise. We have this treasure. We have this hope that's promised by God Almighty, and He's making sure that He's leading us and guiding us, helping us, forgiving us, understanding us, being compassionate towards us. He's our shepherd, and He's doing that all the time, even right now. Say, I'm a sheep. Are you glad about that? I am. I'm glad about it. I would rather be a sheep now in this circumstance as before, being a lost sheep, an ungodly sheep, uh, uh, etc. Like, okay, last verse, Jude 24. Wonderful verse. Now unto him that is able, my, my, what's it going to take for him to be able to keep you from falling? Well, is he going to keep me from falling? Why should he worry about it? He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. How's he going to keep us from falling? By following what I've talked about already. Trusting in him. Trusting in him. Following him instead of other things we're familiar with doing that we wish we hadn't of. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. He's going to be able to do that. Can he do it right now? He's working on it. He's working on it. Cooperate with him. He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. Present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Know that he's our shepherd. Know that we are the sheep. And that's an okay situation. But we need to stay in focus of what that is and what it represents and what needs to provide or progress, rather. God has already accomplished and settled his plan. It's in motion right now. Jesus Christ is still involved. The angels are still involved. The word of God is still involved. We're still involved to follow the plan that we might be eternally with him forever and ever. He's our shepherd, and he's caring for us all the time. Amen. Anyone need prayer? You have a particular need you'd like the church to pray with you about?